Today for section two, we're gonna start talking about the idea of arcs in a circle. And an arc is what's indicated by blue here. It's this section, now I'm indicating it by green, and it's turning into a straight line for me, which is fun. But um, that's, the, that's an arc of a circle. It's a part along the circle itself, and we need to be able to measure that. Now there are gonna be two different ways we're gonna measure that over time. We're gonna talk about the measure of the arc, and later on we're gonna talk about something called the arc length. And that actually comes up more in chapter 11 than in chapter 10. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today is the measure of the arc, which is gonna be different from the arc length, which is something we'll get to later. So the measure of an arc is very simply the same as the measure of the corresponding central angle. A minor arc is an arc that is measured less than uh, 180. A major arc is 180 or more. So the central angle is defined as an angle that has its center at the center of the or vertex at the center of the circle. Hence the name central angle. And the measure of the arc is the same as the measure of the central angle. Now, minor arc versus major arc, okay? Minor, the measure is less than 180, and we name with two letters, which are the endpoints of the arc. And here we'd say AB, and notice we use the arc symbol for arc AB. All right? For a major arc, the measure is greater than or equal to 180, and we name with three letters. So in this case, if I want to go around the long way, okay, starting at A, then to D, and, B, and then B, that's how we'd name it. The first and last letters are always the ends of the arc. It's just in a major arc, we pick some point along the way on that opposite direction, the long way around. So major arcs go the long way around, minor arcs go the short way around. Pretty easy. Um, a semicircle is technically a major arc, but a semicircle is exactly half a circle, semicircle, so that's 180. That's really simple. All right, so let's just practice this a little bit. Find the measure of each arc in P where RT is a diameter, okay? So RT is a diameter of circle P. Uh, so P is the center of my circle, so I have central angles here. First, that's the measure of arc RS. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, RS is this arc right here. That's a minor arc. It's going to be exactly the same as the measure of its corresponding central angle. Well, the corresponding central angle is 110, so it's 110. Next, that's for RTS. Now, there are three letters there, so that's telling me I'm going the long way around. I'm going at R and I'm going at S, but I'm going the long way around through T. So I want this arc. Now, the easiest way to figure that is, okay, I've got 360 degrees in my whole circle. I'm not using 110. 360 minus 110 or 250 degrees. Finally, RST. Let's show where that is on our circle, R to S to T. It really helps in your homework too when you're drawing these or working in the journal on these. Indicate which arc you're finding. Draw over it. Use a highlighter. Use a colored pencil to show which arc you're finding, and then you'll make a lot fewer mistakes. Uh, RST has two endpoints. It says it's a major arc because it's got three letters naming it, but the endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter, which means exactly half the circle, so 180 degrees. Arc addition postulate is just like back in chapter one, we did segment addition and angle addition. It's fairly intuitive, it's nothing that you should be shocked by, but guess what, if I wanna add two arcs together, I get their sum you know, if they're continuous arcs. So if I want to get arc A to B to C, I add arc AB plus arc BC. Shocking. Okay. 
nothing unexpected going on there. So now we're going to start putting things together a little bit more. And here I have a circle that's cut into several different pieces of pi. Now, again, remember that a circle, the sum of all the central angles in the circle, or the sum of all the arcs, is 360. Circles add up to 360. Here I've used 40 plus 80 is 120 plus 110. I've used up 230 degrees, so 360 minus 230 leaves 130 degrees left, which has to be this angle here, which makes total sense with the way the picture is drawn. Once I have that, finding my... my uh, Solution should be easy. Arc GE. Okay, that's this arc. Well, I got a 40 plus an 80 there. 40 plus 80 is 120. Now, how did I know to go that way and not the long way around? Because it's a minor arc. They only gave us two letters. Um, let's try the next one. GEF. Okay, so again, starting at G, going through E, but this time ending up at F. Well, that's 40 plus 80 plus 110, and we just did that. That's 230. Okay. And finally, GF. Well, if I ask for GF, I have to go only two letters. I have to go the short way around, don't I? Well, we already figured that. That's 130 degrees. So arcs, not really that difficult especially when we're dealing with central angles, like we're doing today. Um, identify as major, minor, or semicircle, then find out the measure of the arc. Uh, TQ here, that's pretty straightforward. TQ is this arc, so that's 120 degrees, and that would be minor. QRT... QRT goes around like this. It's a whole circle except the 120. It's obviously a major arc. Three letters and it's more than half the circle. Um, and we use up everything but 120, so 360 minus 120 is 240 degrees. Now your turn. Find the measure of arc TQR, and I'll do you the favor of doing this. Shouldn't be too difficult. There's your first question. All right. That's enough for arcs for the moment. Um, the other thing we need to talk about is congruent circles. What does it mean for two congruent two circles to be congruent? It means they have to have the same radius. It's the only measure that really matters in a circle is the radius of the circle. I guess you could say the diameter does too, but the diameter is just two times the radius. So we boil it down to radius. Circles are congruent only if they have the same radius. Which leads us to congruent central angles and congruent arcs. Central angles and arcs are congruent only if they are have the same measure in congruent circles. This is kind of interesting because... Let's say I'm going to draw a couple circles here for us. That's not a circle. Let me try that again. There's a circle, and there's a circle. Okay? Now, I'm going to be estimating a bit here, but let's say this is a 60-degree angle, so this is a 60-degree arc. And this is a 60-degree angle, so this is a 60-degree arc. Are these central angles congruent? And are those arcs congruent? And the answer is no. Even though they have exactly the same measure, they are not congruent because they are not in congruent circles. This circle has a radius of 8 centimeters. This is a circle, circle has a radius of 3 centimeters. In order for arcs or central angles to be congruent, they have to be in congruent circles or in the same circle. Obviously, if they're in the same circle, they have the same radius, so we're good to go. But that's a little departure from what we normally do. Usually we said, well, two segments are congruent if they have the same measure, two angles are congruent if they have the same measure. But here, just having the same measure isn't enough for congruence. We have to also be in congruent 
circles. So that's kind of important. That's new. And finally, similar circle theorem. Gosh, here's a shock. All, cir all circles are similar. So we want to know about congruent circles. They have to have this uh, same radius. In order for circles to be similar, they have to be circles. Any, any two circles are similar automatically. There's no way to not be similar. Okay. So, are the um, are the arcs congruent or not? The red arcs, and say why or why not. So, letter A here. Both arcs measure 80. Both arcs are in the same circle. So, yes, they are congruent because they have same measure. The same measure. In the same circle. Okay. Letter B. Are the two red arcs congruent? Well, they clearly both have a 90 degree central angle, but TU is in a much bigger circle than RS is. So the answer would be no. Okay, because because they are in circles with different R radius. Letter C, last problem of the day. That one's up to you. Pick the correct answer. 